Aaron of House Hor inherited a kingdom that stretched from the Iron Islands to the Triton. Too great a kingdom to rule from a castle as shitty as Pike. For 40 years, his ironbone plundered the Riverlands for stone, timber, and slaves to build a seat worthy of him. Legend has it that Masons laid the final stone in Aranol on the very day that Aegon landed in Westeros. Could have been a divine omen. Could have been the Masons wanted to fuck off before the dragons got there. They weren't the only ones. At Aegon's approach, Heron's river lords revolted, led by House Tully. I thought Heron noticed. Heron Hall could repel an army of a million men. No ladder could summit its walls, and no ram could shatter them. The castle was as impregnable as an old mate's cunt. Heron shut his gates around himself, his sons and his ironborn and waited for Aegon's army to drain back into the muck. When Aegon finally saw the monstrous castle, he asked for parley. Heron granted it. Valyria had been the greatest empire the world had ever seen. Heron wanted to piss on its ashes. Yield now, and you may remain as Lord of the Iron Islands. Yield now! and your sons will live to rule after you. You see my army outside your walls. You see my dragons. What is outside my walls is of no concern. Those walls are strong and thick. Dragons fly. <laughs> but stone doesn't burn. When the sun sets, your line shall end. Heron spat and returned to his castle. Once inside, he promised lands, riches, and Tully's daughters to whoever could bring down Aegon or his dragon. As the sun sank below the horizon, all of Heron's men patrolled the battlements, hearing wings in every gust of wind. But the moon rose and sank, and no dragon appeared. While the Ironborn were ringing the battlements, Aegon drove his dragon Beleriand higher and higher in the night sky so that even the great castle of Harrenhal looked like an anthill below them. Then they plunged straight into the castle, well inside the guarded walls. The five towers of Harrenhal reached towards Aegon like a hand. Beleriand opened his mouth and bathed all the fingers in flame. Harren was right. Stone doesn't burn, but men do, even when they're ironborn. <laughs> the dragon blasted my ancestors into ash that choked the survivors when they screamed. Heron's soldiers leapt from the battlements and died. They huddled against the walls and died. They fled across the yard and died. Heron and his sons took shelter inside the castle. The stone didn't burn, but as Beleriand blasted it with fire, it glowed. White Hut. <laughs> the world's greatest castle became the world's greatest oven, baking the last of House Horror within it. Outside the castle walls, the towers of Harrenhal glowed red against the night and began to twist and melt like five huge candles with liquid stone trickling down their sides like wax. The next morning, Aegon forged a new Riverlands. He named the rebel Edmund Tully as his Lord Paramount of the Trident and had the other river lords swear him fealty as their new liege. For centuries, House Horror had terrorized the Riverlands. Under House Tully, the Riverlands would at last return to peace and prosperity. After the castle cooled enough to allow men inside, Aegon ventured into the ruin he'd made of Heron Hall. He saw the ashen bodies, the scorched stone, and the mangled and melted swords of his former enemies. To his men's confusion, he ordered these useless swords collected and sent to his Aegon fort. 